Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're all healthy and doing well. As you know, in my previous video, I had received a package from Schminke containing many goodies, and they included uh, a generous amount of tube paints, uh, ranging from their fairly new uh, super granulating paints to their standard lineup, which you can see here. Uh, and I will, if you would like to see that video, I'll leave it in the thumbnail here. So, based on my last video, many of you said that they would like to see a commentary on my painting method and they would uh, like to see the thought process behind it. So, I decided to use this amazing paints to do a uh, landscape painting, a sunset. Uh, which I'll be leaving a uh, picture over here and uh, I hope you like this I will go into details on the materials that I will use later in the video and the brushes the 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 masking fluid the paints and any substitutes if you don't have them and if you would like to see similar videos in the future please subscribe to the channel and if you have any kind of questions or recommendations or anything you would like to see please leave them down in the comment section below and hope you like this tutorial and let's go into the painting so guys uh, the tools that i will be using and the materials in this video uh, i'll uh, break them down to you in case you don't have them i will also uh, state the substitute if you have any so first of all we'll start with this masking fluid i'll be using this uh, schminke masking fluid the white one i like this uh, because it is uh, doesn't have a specific odor the nasty odor that uh, is associated with the masking fluid so i highly recommend you try this but if you don't have this specific brand uh, you can uh, do without it like choose anything else you have other brands uh, Regarding the brushes. I'll be using a hack a brush uh, you can also use uh, something different like a, a mop brush uh, to cover up uh, large areas of paint and uh, also I'll be using uh, two smaller brushes which is in this case in particular uh, a Winster & Newton size 4 and uh, Da Vinci size 5 series 35 uh, which is equivalent to like the if you use like other brands like a size 6 so everything here is like uh, there is a room of place and so each brand has a different uh, for example for the paints they have different uh, names and stuff and for the brushes different sizes but fairly uh, it would be fairly similar so you'll be using a size 6 brush and a size 4 brush approximately uh, and uh, regarding the paints I have the uh, cobalt green from Schminke it is uh, cobalt green dark to be specific uh, this is for uh, uh, like convenience color you can use anything uh, similar to like uh, hookers green and uh, or something like phthalo green if you wanna uh, if you don't have the specific color uh, and all the colors here that I'm using are from the Hordam series uh, the next color is uh, transparent yellow and transparent yellow is like a cool yellow so you can use something like a lemon yellow if you don't have this and regarding the blue i'll be using a warm blue uh, in my specific case this is a cobalt blue deep from schwinke uh, if you don't have this you can use like an ultramarine blue it will also work and finally regarding the red i have a warm red which is vermilion here you can use anything like a cadmium red but if you don't like cadmiums you can uh, use something like uh, pyrrole scarlet from other brands but basically you need a warm red and finally uh, other stuff that i'll be using is uh, this uh, brush uh, which is like a hog brush oil hog brush you can use a toothbrush if you don't have it uh, or uh, something similar I will be using this to scatter some masking fluid uh, to mimic the foliage in the foreground and the picture and finally I have uh, the paper which is uh, sized 11 by 7.5 inches or 28 by 15 centimeters I have taped, taped the sides with uh, masking tape and um, it is uh, Saunders Waterford 200 GSM paper uh, so let's get into it so I start by wetting the sky 
I'm using the hacker brush as you can see here and I'll be mixing a mix of blue color which is a combination of a bit of blue and the red and the yellow I do this so that I don't get a very intense blue color in my sky and I want it to be a bit muted since cobalt blue is really strong and vibrant While adding more water and paint to the sky, I noticed that the paper is buckling quite a bit, so I decided to continue with the painting and do the field uh, at one go while the sky is still wet. So I mix a bit of red and yellow for the sunset, which is more oranges, and I decided to continue with more yellow color in the foreground since there is more uh, green in the foliage. So I do this uh, gradually by mixing a bit of red and a big bit of yellow gradually so I see how intense the color is. Then I decide to remove some of the colors from the sky. I start lifting with my brush to produce this glare effect or the idea that the light is coming from the center outwards because I want the viewer's attention to be focused on the middle which is going to be the tree. So I start lifting a bit of paint and uh, I also uh, start to lift some of the colors to indicate the presence of clouds but I don't want them to be lifted so much that it's uh, bare white I want them to be a hint of uh, blue so that it shows that there is a clear sky I noticed that the buckling is out of control so here I decide to change the tapes and retape it so I retape the paper and start by continuing on the foliage and I mix a color of red uh, and a warmer tone for the grass and I the same way I did for the sky I do the same for the grasses and the foliage I do this uh, streaks that would indicate that the light is coming from the middle and somehow radiating uh, as it goes farther from the center Now that the sky is dry, I decide to add a next layer to the sky to darken the blue color and I do that by simply adding only blue this time since I don't want a lot of uh, saturated colors. I want uh, to keep the vibrancy and not saturate it that much that it would show that the sky is gloomy or cloudy. And now I continue by adding a bit of the background foliage, the small trees and the branches and the far away background. So I start by adding a bit of yellow uh, right behind where the tree will be. And also I add a bit of yellow on the background foliages. 
right before the paint is completely dry uh, I start to lift a bit of the unsettled paint from the sky and add a bit more of a yellow tone so that it will exaggerate the effect of this light coming from behind and this is done by removing all excess paint and water from the painting that is still not dried I also leave the painting to dry completely so once the painting is completely dry I add some of the masking fluid by the tip of the schminke I like this uh, masking fluid since it has a pen tip which can be used to apply uh, a little amount of masking fluid so I do that and using the hog brush that I mentioned previously that usually is used for oil paints it is a stiff brush I use it to dab on the paper to mimic the foliage and unevenness and this is very helpful if you don't have this type of brush you can always use uh, another stiff brush like a toothbrush or any other synthetic type of brush that is uh, fairly stiff and it's important not to use your uh, high quality soft sable brushes or even squirrel brushes because the masking fluid tend to uh, stick to them and even though this is fairly easy to remove this specific type is easy to remove from Schminke uh, it's still I do not recommend leaving the uh, masking fluid to dry on the brush I then wait for the masking fluid to settle and dry completely and I start adding the mid-tones uh, for my foliage so I start adding a mix of a muted red I start mixing the green which was the convenience color since I said it's important uh, to have a green because it will be handy so I try using the green with a bit of red this gives a more brownish and muted red and this is perfect for the uh, mid-tones for the foreground and I start I start applying it and as you can see the place where I have masked they will be uh, left untouched and more of a yellow color instead of having this uh, more of a dark yellow color So for the same mix that I did use to do the foreground of the painting I decided to do the background of the field and I use the same muted red color and I do the background as you can see here uh, till now I make sure that the horizon line on the right side is a bit masked since that's how the reference picture is but on the left side you can see that the horizon line is still mostly prominently present and I want that uh, to give that uh, depth of field because if I don't do that I would end up by uh, homogeneous uh, color which will not give me this depth of field Now I start scraping off the dried masking fluid. I do this after being sure that the painting is completely dried because if I don't wait the painting uh, to dry completely I would risk of messing up the masked part.
and now I start by holding the brush as you can see here in a tilted angle and that is to help me uh, achieve more brush uh, more dry brush strokes and I add a bit of yellow with the green and I work on the, the foreground of the field uh, and this way it will help me achieve this dry marks which mimic the weeds and the grass that are coming out of the ground Here I decide to do the background of the field and I mix a mixture of yellow, red and a bit of green to give this uh, soily color as done previously and uh, I'm not afraid here of messing up or getting bloom since the paint that I'm using is fairly dry since I'm using dry paint. Here I start by indicating the first layers of the tree. I also uh, start by painting the tree slowly and dabbing some of the colors to, uh, to in the same tilted manner to show the branches. I want this to be uh, more of a reddish brownish color uh, since it will be already dark because it is backed up by the color of the light. Here I'm adding the shadow of the tree by mixing a bit of red with yellow and adding a hint of green to them and I also add a bit of the details in the background I don't want a lot of details in the background I wanted to stay a bit of hazy since it is far away and we cannot make out the composition in the background but all I want to indicate is a bit of plant and stuff happening near and even behind the tree And now I decide to darken a bit of the background by making the right side more dark and the left side brighter. And I do this by adding more pigment and less water. And this is where the importance of water and paint pigment comes in handy. So I do this by adding more blue to my mixture to make the color darker and show that it's in the background.
and finally i'm adding the last layer of orangish dark color and this is just before i add more of a green tint to the foreground and this dark reddish color or brownish red color is achieved by mixing a bit of red with uh, a bit of green and this gives a muted color which is remnant of a uh, purplish color Now I move on adding a bit more blue to my palette as you can see since I have already consumed all the blue and I do that because I will move on adding more of a bluish green tint to my foreground and this will be the final step of uh, changing the uh, hues of the foreground and uh, as you can see here that the the uh, foreground is now being darkened more and more as it was in the reference picture and I will also be moving after this to the tree and to the background of the tree.
Now I start mixing a pure yellow and red mixture and this is because I don't want any other impurities in terms of those color mixes. I don't want any blue or green in my mix. I want it to be bright orange. So I purely mix a yellow and orange mixture to give me the effect of the sunlight that is being lit behind the tree. And uh, already the background of the tree is already a bit of brownish so I'm not afraid of having a very vibrant and saturated color. While the paint that I had applied already the behind the tree is wet, I take my damp hacker brush and I do uh, many uh, several sweeps uh, towards the sky to give this radiation or radiant yellow effect as if the light is shining right behind the leaves of the tree. Now I move on adding a bit of more color which is orangish and brownish color to the masked part that I had masked previously and those are the parts of the highlight where the light from the sun behind the tree and the rays of light are being reflected and passing through the branches of the tree and they are being projected on the ground so I indicate this by a yellowish and orangish color as you can see here then I will move to the next step which is the last step and that will be the last layer which is adding the darkest darks and the final touches using the smallest brush which is my size 4 brush Here as you can see I'm finally removing the last bits of massing fluid that I had laid on the paper which were between the branches of the tree and I wanted to mask this part because I wanted it to stay white since I will be adding the uh, pure yellow color to it which is the brightest bright of the part near the trees and I want this to be removed because I will be adding the final branches and the details on the tree as you can see here. And finally, by using the darkest mix on my palette, I will be adding my last touches and trying to combine both the background of the field and the foreground by adding the transition colors and the darkest darks.
so this is it guys i hope uh, you like the process and the painting if you have any questions please uh, don't hesitate to leave it down in the comment section below if you have any questions regarding the painting the tools that i used or uh, any technique that i used and if you like the video and my explanation uh, leave a like on the video and uh, recommend it to friends and family who might be also interested in uh, watercolor and art in general and I'll be doing more of these kind of tutorials and reviews in the future I hope you like it stay tuned for more so stay safe guys and I hope you have a healthy and a happy week bye